my hat? There it is. Welcome, everyone. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. I have a machine gun now. Welcome to the Complete Honest Rate Podcast. Uh, the last one of 2022. December 13th, Tuesday, 2022. That's Ian Ferguson. That's me. That's Pat Contry. On the show today, we'll be discussing uh, the Video Game Awards. Boy, was I excited. Um, <laughs> me too. DCEU in fucking shambles. It, it keeps getting worse. Uh, Michael Jordan in NBA Jam, finally. Well, I mean, he was allegedly back then. Um, what's Ian doing back there? I'm just getting off this bag. GameStop in shambles as well. Yeah. And then, Ian, uh, how, was your, how was your week? Oh, oh. My weekend was very good, Patrick. What is that? A peanut butter cup? This is not just a peanut butter cup, Patrick. Oh, is that a... Fr- That's a fresh... Factory, factory fresh? Direct. Oh, I see. Uh-oh. Peanut butter cup. Man. Uh-oh. Uh, what are you doing? One of your two Christmas presents is someone might think highly of you enough to give you some of those factory drinks. Thank you, cups. Ian. Mm-hmm. You gave me three, three factory... They're smaller ones, but I still appreciate it. They're the smaller ones. They're but so good. The fact you can order direct from uh, from uh, from Hershey's on this, right? Mm-hmm. You can only do it. They do it uh, once a year for sure. Good until uh, October 2023. Um, they do it once a year. They do a run every year in October, and it makes sense because they're probably during Halloween. Whatever leftover fucking shit they have is gone. It's Just out gone. the door. So they have to do um, a new batch. And so they offer it sometime between the last week of October and the first week of November. Mm-hmm. But this year they held a little bit of stock over for Black Friday Uh huh. and then released it. So I got some of the Black Friday stock. And they say they do it a couple times a year, but I've never seen the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups come up factory direct more than once a year. So you think after they they do all their deals for like the the, the giant bags of candy, they throw some in there. And they yeah, have, they have left. And we over. talked about, or maybe yeah. it was on the other podcast, but um, Halloween's like the Super Bowl of candy. Sure, like your stock is that. De- I mean, that's you're probably selling more. Oh yeah, more at Halloween than any other time of the year. Oh, absolutely. So that's that's when a bunch of these companies are probably that's their Christmas season pumping out some fresh yeah. shit. That, that's so you gotta the, take advantage of it. They have their own Black Friday for candy. Mm-hmm. They they go into the black probably somewhere in early October. Yeah. for the year, and, and then do that. Well, thanks, Ian. Your, your your present. We'll get to unwrapping some presents later. It's it's still somewhere in the in the. Post do you want your system. present now? No, we'll do it later at the end of the intro. Okay, we'll do it at the end, Ian. But but thanks for eating one in front of me. You're welcome. You know, you I could have one too. No, I can't. Intermittent fasting. It's I, one day. I don't eat until at least noon. Sometimes one or two, or sometimes three or four. It's one day, depending on the, no. Anyways, anyways, moving on. Uh, I up, upgraded my uh, iOS to 16, and I should have looked at the reviews first because whenever you update an older iPhone, this is an X. Ian has an, he said an eight. I think yeah. eight's the last, an eight, the last one they support for uh, the new iOS 16. Whenever you, if you don't have an uh, an iPhone out there, when you go, they had smaller updates. When you go, when you jump a whole number, they add. It's totally different. So we were in the 15s, and it was fine. And the 16, I jumped up, uh, then, oh, no, and I have an X, which is, like, at this point, five years old almost, about, uh, I think it's five years old. I was like, oh, no, the battery's draining super fast, and I panicked, because I, I told you uh, a year and a half ago that uh, the summer yeah, summer of last year, I had my iPhone 6S that I loved to death, had yeah. forever, yeah, you was fine. That. You loved that phone. And then overnight, the iOS, uh, they throttled the battery and killed my phone. Like, I literally had to start charging it twice in a day. I'm not even kidding. When I was at a Comic-Con... I like remember. Last year, yeah, yeah. I forgot my I forgot my cord, so I was like, I barely got the lift to get home because mm-hmm. it went from thirty to like twenty percent in like two minutes of use, and I'm like, what? Anyway, anyway, so when I first upgraded it, I was scared because then I was like, wow, I should have looked at reviews first. Why would I assume that this is not going to kill my phone? Because to some people, it kills their phone. Um, and it turns out that when you first update a new iPhone. It has to do things that can kill your battery in the short term. It puts it through its paces. It's installing and running shit and tests and diagnostics and what have you or well, whatever. Well, the big thing, it, it, it's literally indexing all your photos again. Oh, uh, okay. It has to re-tag them. It has to check for duplicates. It has Weird. To, all the meta... Uh, it has to you know, put them in the folders. It, you know, there's automatic folders for your 
photos. Like, yeah, it yeah, knows, yeah, yeah. It knows your face or your selfies. So it has to do all this shit. And so if you have like like I do, you know, like I don't offload any of my po- photos too often. I have gigs and gigs, you know, 10, 20 gigs of photos and videos or 30 gigs. So like my phone was dropping in percentage from like 20% even when plugged in. So it was getting killed. You could watch it. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, 20, 19, 18. So I was, I, I got freaked out because you can't roll back to a full uh, version less. It would be like a fucking day process to do that. Like worse than reinstalling a, a computer because you'd have to back up your entire phone, which is another issue. I love, I love Apple's um, iOS on a phone. I hate how locked down it is. You can't even easily tell iTunes program where you back which was used to back up where to back it up to so it started backing up to my C drive which is my smallest hard drive uh mostly is because it's solid state it's quick and it ran out of space my computer my computer started to be like give me error messages I'm like what's happening zero space left on my C drive because it was about two-thirds backed up but so I said to myself well how the fuck could people back up the if they don't have a bigger hard drive and they have like, say, say on my phone, I had like 80 gigs or 90 gigs. My let's hard drive, say, let's say I probably had about that on my phone. Um, with all the apps and everything else and phone pictures, what if my hard drive only has 60 gigs left. And this is my C drive. I can start del- deleting stuff willy nilly on it. Sure. So That's where you've got like your operating system uh, and and programs, yeah. okay. Operating system programs. And so I now have like two thirds of my phone backed up, but now like, I had no hard drive space. I like delete shit off my desktop to get a few hundred meg left. I swear to God, that's what I do. I, I think I got two, three gigs off my desktop that was just sitting there. And I'm like, this sucks. You can't choose where to back up your phone to. Maybe it's a security thing. Not, they don't want to do it to an external, but I couldn't even pick another internal hard drive to do it. Anyway, the point is this. The phone seems to be fine. It was at 99% this morning. It's at 94% now. That seems kind of normal. It's probably a little bit slower, but I'll take it. I'll take it, Ian. You'll take it. We talked about food and my, and, uh, my unfortunate Wendy's uh, Italian chicken sandwich experience. We also talked about ex- Jack in the Box. On the exclusive uh, Nothing Matters podcast we do for our Patreons, patreon.com slash CU podcast. That was fun. Check it out. Check it the heck out. Uh, so the FTC is now suing Microsoft over the pending Activision uh, Blizzard merger. This is from uh, GameSpot. Jessica Howard, the Federal Trade Commission, has officially sued Microsoft in an attempt to stop the company's $69 billion acquisition. Nice. Of, nice. A video game publisher, Activision Blizzard. <laughs> so stupid. I do it every time I see it on a fucking post. I have to say nice. <laughs> Where did that come to. from? Where did that originate from? I don't know. Just people being like, 69. Nice. It's, it's a great number. Great experience if you can get it. Yep. The suit, which was filled Thursday, December 8, claims that the deal would be make would make Microsoft too strong a competitor in the video game industry and would ultimately suppress competition. The lawsuit comes as a little surprise as Politico indicated that the FTC was likely to file antitrust claims against Microsoft late last month. So there we have it. And then Sony's whining the whole time. I understand that's that's a lot of money getting taken out of their pocket, but it's almost unbecoming of Sony how much they've been whining about. It's an, and Call of Duty. Sure. Uh, our games aren't going to see uh, Medal of Honor sucks. Uh, I mean, yeah. All these other games don't Not sell Medal as of well. Honor. I don't think there's been a Medal of well, Honor you know, for game in forever. But, but yeah. I was saying, the business was saying, well, these other games don't sell as well uh, as Call of Duty. That's, yeah, Battlefield can't yeah, compete yeah, with Call of that's Duty. That's what they were saying. Battle, Battlefield sucks. It's funny as hell. I don't know. I'm not saying it's right or wrong you know, these big acquisitions, but I just think Sony's response has been funny to me to watch. I don't know. It's been something. It's been, it's been something. This is going to take a while, by the way. Why well, these, th- these things are not quick. No, these fed, no. things, but they usually go in the feds direction. The wheels it, of justice turn very, very slowly. I'm trying to think of the Microsoft one, what, how long that one took. Oh God. Uh, from like 20 years ago, whenever that was. Yeah. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. Who are yeah. they? Who do they try to buy? Forget. Microsoft antitrust suit. Antitrust. I forgot what happened with that. Uh, the original one. Obviously, this is a new Microsoft one. Uh, US v. Microsoft from justice.gov. When was that? Oh, there was original one in 85. I think there's more than one. All right, I'm not getting into it. I'm, I'm thinking of the one from the turn of the century. 
I think happened. that was just because was they, that, was that was that the thing putting it. I don't think it was because they were buying it. I think it Internet was because Explorer. they were putting they were putting it on. I thought it was more than that. I thought it was Windows just being on every computer. I thought a part of it was Internet, Internet Explorer, Explorer being packed in that was killing off all the other um, browsers. Sure. The, the, uh, the, speaking of which, quick quick fun side note. Uh, at work the other day, uh, without getting into what I do, uh, I had to pull up two email addresses. Uh, for people to send something to and uh, the one email they were the owners of a business the one email address was a netscape.com email address and the other email address was an aol.com email well, address aol still around it's like, <laughs> netscape still around i mean the i servers? guess you, i guess i guess your domain can still like be there Netsca- I, like what what's that netscape.com yeah i don't know. aol owns it so that's they kept it around. There we go. AOL. I mean, I know AOL's still around. They were bought out by someone. I, I don't know. Well, like I don't. Yeah, but AOL's not a service anymore for uh, for dial up, or they don't provide internet, do they? I don't know. I thought it was just an email service at this point. And the news site basically just keeps them. Great. There's there's a uh, DeSantis news on the fucking front. Ugly motherfucker. Anyway. Um, oh, don't talk politics, Ian. Well, he's ugly. It's not politics. Yeah, don't talk about. politics. I'm also not allowed to play with my hood during the intro. I've never heard someone complain about someone that. Someone said that said it was because I'm insecure about my hair, and I I want to know what kind of person sits online and like makes their life out of comments like that. Well, that's half of YouTube comments, though, Ian. Was it a YouTube comment? Yeah, it was very strange. It was just a very strange one. Well, that's the hair comments I've gotten? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying uh, it's very strange. It's of a, course it's, it's strange. A, it's a strange. There's fucking There's weirdos out there. There's lots of awful comments that I don't I don't bring up, but that one was just very strange. I, I've never seen a comment about your sw- sweatshirt. I think I think Get a sweatshirt. fucking life. Don't let, don't let them get to you. No, but they need to know that they're trash human beings sometimes. Oh, sure, sure. A lot of people are. All right, uh, free Mario Kart 8 Deluxe update lets you choose what power-ups appear during races. I don't know why I added this. I added this before the Video Game Awards. Is this is this something you, you would use, Ian? It is, uh, but the thing is, is I think it's funny that they're announcing it. It looks like they just did a graphical overhaul. Uh, maybe this is more specific, but you've always been able to select uh, the items when you do multiplayer. I used to always end all of my online Mario Kart 8 rooms that people would come play in with all, uh, all bananas tracks. Well, well, Nintendo of Europe said a new custom items feature is now available. Like I said, it looks like it was revamped. Oh, but you've always been able to. Yeah, but it look. But and, and, like I said, you may be able to be more selective, but you've always been able to have some control over the items in your races. So you can do blue shells only. Yeah, just just chaos. Yeah, maybe you couldn't do that in the last in the in it bef- before. Like I said, this looks more specific, but uh, it's not a brand new feature. It's just an upgraded feature. Blue shells only would be so interesting just because you would never want to be in first place. You want to like until the end. You want to like everyone will be like it would be a race of who's going slower almost. It'd be hysterical. Yeah, it'd be I also funny. Want to try that. I also want to try that. And then the video game awards happened. With, uh, uh, no with one's expecting us to say much of anything. Our about holy them. our holy Dorito Pope Jeff Keighley puts on a good show and now does the summer games thing trying to get at E3 against E3. But uh, there were some stuff that there was some stuff that was announced. You say no one expects us to talk about this? Is that what no you No one said? expects us to cover it in depth. We don't talk about new shit we haven't forever. We do every once in a while. What are you talking about? Cyberpunk shit we, t- we covered in, in detail? That mess? We cover some of it. If yeah, it's some. in the news, if there's a, we never talk about playing any this, of this it. The antitrust stuff is, is modern gaming news? Okay. There was a Final Fantasy 16 trailer released, okay. a new one. Uh, Hades 2 was announced. That's something that I'm actually extremely excited about. Hades was great. Um, Diablo 4 got a release date trailer. My favorite game. Um, suicide Squad. Uh, there was a some sort of suicide. There was squad? a Super Mario Brothers movie clip that was actually very cute. I enjoyed it. Oh, we'll get to that at the end. That's its own mini topic. Oh, I is it? That's okay. enough. I mean, there's enough. There's Tekken enough, 8. There's enough sizzle there. Games won there's awards. Uh, Elden Ring won game of the year. I'm just going to cut to the only thing that's important to me. Death and that's Ring 2? Nope. And that is Armored Core 6 finally y- got y- fucking y- announced. You skipped over Idris Elba joining Cyberpunk? You love Idris. I love Idris Elba, but I don't care about Cyberpunk. I said there's only one thing and only okay. one thing. That mattered to me. Street and Fighter 6, don't care. I do, but, uh, you know, I, I mean, we know about Tekken Street 8, Fighter 6. I do care about Tekken 8, but not as much as I care 
about Armored Core 6. Um, it's probably going to be the game that pushes me to buy a PS5. Uh, oh, it's going to be exclusive? No, it's not. But my PC, while it, uh, while it could... I don't want to kill the damn thing. It's got a 3080 in there and 16 gigabytes of RAM. I'm about to upgrade it to 32. You think I can handle it? Oh, it can. I mean, it might be able to. Just get another monitor. You bought a monitor. You can hook up the monitor. I did. I hook it up to my, my TV all yeah. the time. But it's just, I don't know that I want to fuck around with settings and shit like that. That's a game I want yeah, to be able to. What do you got this thing for? Because I play tons of shit on it and I use it for work. But that's a game that I want to be able to throw into a system and not have to worry about a fucking thing. Well, as, as Cyberpunk has shown us, that's not a guarantee anymore. With well, this stuff. that's a company that released an unfinished <laughs> okay. game. I'm just much saying. in the same way that Game Freak. Uh, I, I have faith in, in from software. It's not the guarantee. It used to be on consoles. No, no, it's it not. It's not. <laughs> but yeah, so that's where I'm at. If there's anything else you want to say about the Game Awards, go for it. But I tried to I watch 30 minutes of it and it, could not. It literally went from I used to watch this four or five years ago. I'd watch almost the entire thing, at least check in, to all right, I'll just check in a couple things to I don't care. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or I'm not into obviously some of these games or the fact that obviously it's just an announcement show. I'm not even trying to sound um, crabby. I just don't have the patience to sit through it's it. An it's, announcement it's not show. for me. It's, it's not, not for me. That's it's, all. It's not an award show. It's not. Sure. It's a commercial show. I mean, masquerading as an award show. And obviously, since they fund it, that's what it is. The major companies all fund it. So, but it's like, let's not pretend that this is something special. The awards really don't mean anything. In the grand scheme of things, you'll get a, you'll get like, you know, they'll repackage some games physically. At least they used to and say, oh, this was the game of the year. But all the, but all the magazines do that anyway. They have their own game of the year editions. Yep. So it doesn't Everything matter. Everything can get a game of the year edition out if uh, they, they, <laughs> Get enough reviews. Yeah, best of show. You go to you go, yeah, when I used to go to like E3, you'd have all the companies at IGN putting their ribbon. Oh, this is the best, uh, whatever. And then the companies use that shit. It's, I don't know. I've gotten, uh, not that I've grown more cynical. I just don't have the patience for this anymore. Where it's just so blatantly naked, just this is just advertising and I don't care. Well, I think there's um, something, I, I think I think there's a lot of people who do watch it and have a good time I, watching it, and that's fine. But because they have their tempered expectations and they just want to like, see reveals. And they do stuff like Gamer of the Year. Like who won Gamer of the Year? Like, well, how do? You, what does that even mean? They did, did they do the Gamer of the Year. They do, what do they call it? I have no idea. They, like because they, I have not watched it. Did they give out a lifetime achievement? That at least is interesting. That's the only thing that's not cynical. That they do every year in the Game Awards. They Which give, one? They, like the, the lifetime achievement. Oh yeah, yeah. Like they've given it to Roberta Williams and Ken. They they've given it to. Uh, um, I can't remember. They've given it to Kojima one year. Mm -hmm. The one year where he was booted off Konami a few years ago. Kojima, <laughs> they gave, yes. <laughs> They gave it to him. Um, yeah. Now I can't remember. Did they do that every year? I don't know. I have no idea. We don't pay attention to it, which is why no one expects us to cover it. <laughs> now, now there's a bunch of other lifetime achievements I'm looking at. I thought the Game Awards did a lifetime achievement. Maybe they called it something else. Did they stop that? Did they really stop that? No, they didn't. Uh, Phil Spencer won it. Really? No, that was another thing. I can't even keep track. Of I it. don't know, but we're falling apart on this segment. All right, all right so, Captain Intro. Uh, it, uh, it, it, uh, if you want to learn about the Game Awards, you can check any other podcast or any other website out there. They will well, give the you the rundown. Well, the fact that I can't fucking find it easily. Okay, here's a list. You know what you can find easily, can Patrick? You, you can find UltimateNintendo.com easily. We're moving on <laughs> from the Video Game Awards. <laughs> And what can you find <laughs> for the holiday season? You can find books, pins, RBI baseball stickers, etc. DVDs, Blu-rays. Keepsakes. Keep you can find some fucking keepsakes. I had four people respond, five people to say that said <laughs> I bought a DVD and I had four or five DVD sales a week ago after you mocked the keepsake. Well, people love keepsakes, man. Yes. I mean, what is there to say? It's a keepsake. You know why you mocked me? People aren't... You're fucking trying to say that people were in the cabins in the backwoods playing DVD players only. <sighs> Don't make fun of our flyover it's in state. in the same category as... flyover state followers. It's in the same category as a precious moments figurine. It's a keepsake. It's, it's, not, it's not an old thing your grandma had in the 70s, an old cherubic little porcelain little tchotchke. I love that word, tchotchke. So tchotchke. 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 It's a good word. Uh, Can't spell it. C-H-O... Chach, I just spelled it the other day. C H O T C H K E. Oh. Okay, so they had yeah. content creator of the year. What the hell does that mean? I guess that's a Twitch or YouTuber. Best, yeah, we're off of that, by the way. Best esports athlete. I'm sorry, it's T C H. 
They didn't do a Lifetime Achievement Award? It's not showing up here. Shame on you, Jeff Keeley, if you did not do a Lifetime Pat, Achievement Award. please move on from the Game Awards. I'll be on Twitch, <laughs> Sunday and Holidays, every Wednesday, twitch.tv slash country code. And a certain NES guide app is released. A new version on iOS. Already at 3.2. Yeah, the, the, the number, the ratings keep going up. We're, we're flipping those bad uh, ratings from, the, from when the last dev stopped working on it. Uh, so we're getting back there. And it's going to be released on Android. By the weekend, I was told by the dev. And, and it's all new. It's all nice. great. Ian loves it. He doesn't love it. Um, but the, So by this weekend, the Android version will be, will be out. So iOS.ultimatenes.com and, and Android.ultimatenes.com will redirect to the stores for both there. All right. We have, we have some uh, bad news that sucks for people that we know from, uh, from Blaze who put out the Evercade handheld units and now the, well, the console unit as well. Uh, the Evercade EXP stock was stolen six hundred thousand dollars worth of stock this was all the fun stock i guess fun stock is a distributor that's putting out this stuff this was the uh limited edition uh, units uh that were stolen uh, it's set off a lorry which is a truck to us all across the pond uh suspected targeted robbery targeted that's what's scary like this was premeditated it wasn't like a, yeah it wasn't like hey there's a truck laying around with the keys in it this was like they knew what this was it sounds like a heist yes scary no one was hurt so they put out uh they put out a note about this on their page page about this um the stock was moving between warehouses for uh, dispatch to all U uk us and rest world customers all the stock was taken in this terrible possibly organized attack EU stock was not affected and has arrived in fun stocks European warehouse successfully. So it's everything outside of that. So outside of Europe, uh, so UK, USA, and rest of the world. That's chunky. Evercade EXP limited edition orders on funstock.co.uk outside of EU countries was stolen. Yeah, this does not affect any standard white editions. Uh, we've been tirelessly working behind the scenes, li liaising with police, evaluating the situation, and defining a plan of action that we communicate to our customers. We are at Blaze are hugely angry and frustrated at this. With these products so close to release, the time cannot be worse. So they are. Um, they say their customers are their number one concern. They are, they have immediately started reproduction of the affected stock. They aim to ship this as fast as possible to fulfill all orders and with the support of Fun Stock, providing updates to all affected customers. I feel so bad for them. I mean, yeah, what this a, isn't a gigantic, gigantic company. Obviously, they've done right, well this, the past this, few years. This hurts. Like this um, is a, a, this is a huge financial blow. Um, and people, well, people are a product. That's the thing. So like th they have to reproduce it. They're out of money. People, are, people, out of some, pe of money. some people will ask for refunds. So like it does hurt. Yes. Um, so in terms of number of units, if you go, if you do the math, if it's like, it was around 600,000 and these limited ones, uh, I believe were about, what well, they're about 180, uh, limited, uh, EXP Evercade, um, if I did I did the math on the on the phone with you the other day, and it's a lot of units, obviously. It's probably like it's yeah, it's a lot, but I'll do it again. Sure. I think it was about 180, and, and that you got you got your own special uh case for it. You got a you got a carry uh case as well. You got your own you, it, well the case the, the external case was different. Yeah, it was black. Uh, the gray then, and, then the you white. Got a, and then you got a carry case, and then you got two uh, game pack ins that were included as well. So it's also software that's affected as well. So six hundred thousand, I, I believe it was one hundred and eighty or so each, because the regular ones are about what one hundred and forty, one hundred and fifty. I believe uh, so. One hundred and fifty, the regular EXP is uh, divided by, let's just say, one hundred and eighty or even two hundred. It's like it's over three. It's between three and four thousand units. Between three and four thousand units. It's like thirty. Let's just say thirty five hundred units. That fucking sucks. That's nuts. Yeah. So. Hopefully, customers, you understand that this is not going to be quick and easy no. to reproduce them on the lines, you know, and then get them shipped over. You know what I mean? And have and have that all done. Uh, I don't know where these actually are produced. I shouldn't know. I don't know if they're produced in Asia or not. I have to look that up. Either way, it's going to be a while. Yep. So it sucks. I'm hoping there's insurance to cover this. Um, yeah, I really hope there is something like that in play. I feel like there has to be. So then it's not at least all out of pocket. You'll get at least some back. <sighs> that but would be better. Unfortunately, my gut tells me that insurance covers wholesale costs and not retail cost. Right. So like, it's going to help, but it's not going to get it back to where it was. But at least they'll cover the cost to reproduce them. 
but they wouldn't cover any loss of like, hey, if people ask for sales money back and, and stuff like that. So, right, right, right. So right. it's not like it wouldn't be if there's insurance. It wouldn't be like it. It, it still sucks, but it wouldn't be like the giant catastrophe. It would be a smaller catastrophe at least. So, because I've gone through this myself with book stuff and going through claims, and it's like, yeah, they're not covering you the retail cost. Mm -mm. They're just covering you replacement uh, to replacement to the manufacturer for stuff like that. So it sucks. We're good folks. They're a good team. I've t I've spoken to a couple of the folks on the team personally a, a year ago. Um, yeah. Well, what else is going on? Uh, the DCEU is in shambles. Um, Wonder Woman 3, Black Adam 2, Man of Steel sequel, and Batman Beyond are all canceled. And we didn't know there was a Batman Beyond until a few days ago when they said, yeah, that Batman... No, they mentioned it. They mentioned it. Oh, they did? I yeah. didn't know. Oh, yeah. It, it, I was said, excited for that. That was talked about a while back. And they said, yeah, because Michael Keaton was supposed to come back first in Flash. Yep. Well, he is. And then shows up in Batgirl, which is now shelved. No one will ever, it'll never see the light of day. And now was supposed to be the older Bruce Wayne for a Batman Beyond. Yep. Which would have been fucking awesome. It would have been out of great. All, out of all these, I mean, all of these projects. That was the one that I was the most excited for was Batman Beyond. I loved Batman Beyond when it came out. It was an interesting concept. I've watched um, it with Vani a little bit. It's, it's fucking awesome. She loves it. It's a great future Gotham Elseworld thing. And then, um, the, the return of the Joker movie was great. That was like the end cap to the. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was great. Um, I didn't so, know you watched Batman Beyond. A little bit. I mean, I was a little bit older, but once I I, I saw some episodes and I saw. The, yeah, I didn't watch nearly as much of it. Of it was course, like it's like Batman 90s. animated, yeah. but I was, I was in college. <laughs> I was in high school and college, but no, it was good. It was like a sleek suit. It wasn't. It was you know a little had a little flying thing going on with yeah. the wings, and it was a little a little stealthy. It was interesting. It was like a big battle suit, you know. It wasn't like fucking uh, the Affleck suit where he's bulked up to the nines and, you know, whatever. Fake muscles. Um, I'm not saying he didn't get into shape, but it's, those suits have all fake muscles. So that sucks. Wonder Woman 3 is interesting just because, like, the first two come out and the first one people liked. The second one sounded like it was a disaster that no one liked. I didn't like, see it, but everyone uh, said it was bad, which is which sucks because I... I first one was good. <laughs> minus a couple of spots. I really liked the first one. The first one was good. And then Black Adam 2 probably is not going to happen. We'll get into that's a mess. And the Man of Steel sequel that people were like, they, that from what reports were, they were like getting, starting to get going with it, getting a script writer in because spoilers, Henry Cavill cameoed as Superman in the Black Adam 2 movie and The Rock pushed for that to happen. He, I guess he shows up in the, the Black Adam 2? You mean I mean, Black, Black Adam? Adam Black yeah. Adam. He shows up in the after, I guess, in the post credit scene, but... And that, and supposedly Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, pushed for that personally, because The Rock envisioned himself as the new leader of the DCEU up to a few months ago. I like James The Rock, him. but man, he has some fucking delusions about his ability to push movies and carry movies. He really, really he, does. And that's what I'm going to get into. So Black Adam Two may not be happening. It, it wasn't going to happen potentially before because that's going to lose money. Black Adam Two that underperformed underperformed after all the black adam yeah one sorry. one yes yeah, sorry i keep saying two because two i'm looking at two on the screen black adam underperformed it would it got mid reviews very mixed reviews on rotten tomatoes um and people were just were not interested in this character that yeah. it was only known as as a villain to captain marvel slash shazam and now right is exactly introduced as an anti-hero in his own movie so it's yeah, just, my understanding is they changed Black Adam's story a lot because The Rock wanted him to become like a more like just heroic, central, central, yeah, character. central character. Thirty nine percent of Rotten Tomatoes. Oof, worse than I thought. I thought it was in the fifties. That was uh, oh really? It's, <laughs> yikes! Uh, critics consensus: Black Adam may end up pointing the way to an exciting future for DC films. <laughs> well, no. no, but as a standalone experience, it's a wildly uneven letdown. The audience says it's one of the best DC movies to date. That's not saying much. No, it's I, not. But it doesn't look like it is based upon what people were saying about it. So you had the Justice Society show up in there. And so... I can't believe you're ruining it for me. No. <laughs> what? I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, the old-ass Justice Society from the Golden Age. No one knows about it outside of nerds like us even know what that is. Um, so The Rock envisioned, I think, in his head, Black Adam being like 
the like the tent pole yes. of DC movies for some reason. Yeah, because because it's him. Not the fact that no one yes. cares about the character. No one cares about just just Justice Society characters at all. Right. Uh, no one cares about Hawkman. Hawkman is fine, but no one cares about him. No one cares about uh, the Atom and the other characters. They don't. Um, so and, it, and and I read that they were thinking about doing a Justice Society movie. No one would have seen that. I mean, no one would have seen that. DC so, forgets that they. I mean, and I'm not trying to be like a fanboy. I don't read Marvel shit anymore. I've been sick of Marvel years, but DC really loves to think they've got the depth of roster that Marvel does, and they don't. It's tough. Their to... side care, and it's tough to build up their side characters because one of the big differences between DC and Marvel is there's a lot of Marvel heroes that feel like everyday people. Yes, but in DC, they're everyone gods. is. They're all gods. They're all held up on this fucking I... pedestal. Batman is the only one that really isn't, and even he can be written like that. It's overrated. It's, it's not. Yeah. It's not interesting. It's hard to feel like you're ever watching true relationships or anything develop because they're all these people put on pedestals in these high pants. I just, I like some very specific DC stuff, but overall it's very tough for me to get into. Yeah. The characters are overpowered. It's hard to associate with them. I always talk about how it's hard to write Superman, but at least he has a humanity because he came to earth and you know, he's an orphan. And I feel so like the hard easier. to write Superman uh, stuff is a little overplayed. You just intro in introduce some humanity there and it, yes. you can because he, he's but, he's an interesting enough character given his origin and the way he feels about people. But mm -hmm. you can't do that. With, I mean, but that's their entire slate. Sure. The, the Holy Trinity. You have Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is interesting, but also overpowered. And but the problem with with this this movie is that it's first of all, it's The Rock playing The Rock. He only plays himself. Right. And like you said, I think he, either he overestimates or the public does, overestimates his popularity and draw for these movies. Right. Like he's been in movies that did not do that well and were not that good. Um, like it, like the fucking Rampage movie, for example. Oh, right. I forgot about like, that. Like he's been in these movies where, oh, it's The Rock playing a, a zoologist, but it's The Rock. Right. And it's like at some point... The, the, the expression in wrestling is you have to show ass, meaning that you have to show humility and being beat down yes. so you can come back. And his characters never experienced that because I think his ego, uh, Dwayne Johnson's ego, doesn't want even his characters to show that in these movies. Right. Like yep. when you watch him in the Fast and the Furious movies, he doesn't get his ass kicked ever. He doesn't lose a fight ever. Sure. He's the big fucking guy, guns out, throwing everyone around. And while that's cool in theory... You, it's hard to get. It's hard to identify with those characters that never get beat down. Why do you think Indiana Jones is so fucking popular? He gets his ass kicked yep. all the time. Nope, absolutely. That's exactly it. Uh, I just can't identify with any uh, anyone in the DC universe. It's tough. Jo John McClane in Die Hard gets his ass handed to him, bleeding all over, suffering. Oh yeah. You have to have your characters, protagonists, experience this so that they can come back. You would garner sympathy. This is basic writing. And when I see when I saw the trailer for Black Adam, he's catching missiles, he's throwing shit. The Justice Society, he's catching Hawkman's fucking uh whatever he uses. He uses the the fucking the, the thing to hit him with. What is that called? I forget. The scepter, whatever the fuck it is. Uh he he's and he's just shrugging off everything. I don't want to watch that. Why is that interesting? They a, they took they uh, took a lesser known character and remodeled it to fit the rock for what is basically a vanity show yes he wanted to be the character forever um he he pushed to get henry cavill in it cavill might have quit witcher season three just to do superman that's not clear but there's that's hints. what i had heard was basically he had put it off to he he quit witcher to come back to movies i, I don't i don't know if it was actually um i feel horrible if that's the case because now if this doesn't happen it's like it's a waste and he's and, sure because obviously he loved doing that and he loved doing superman he loved doing both but there has been a superman movie in almost 10 years now which is insane oh, if you don't count batman v superman that that garbage so that's gone what happens now we don't fucking know they, they're announcing these plans going forward, but it sounds like there was a power struggle internally. The Rock wanted to be put front and center, and James Gunn and his partner were like, well, they're, they're the new hires. It's going to be their vision. Keep in mind that even though the Suicide Squad was good, that didn't make money either. And yes, I came out during the pandemic, but like, they're on shaky ground to begin with, even with a new creative vision. And now it's coming out that supposedly uh, Dwayne Johnson leaked Black Adam 
Uh, I almost info, forgot we had Rhett, this part to talk about. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson leaked bad Black Adam profit info. And I saw this on Twitter trying to push it. Hey, I, I, I'm going to speak to our financiers. I think we made between 50 and 70 million when all said and done. And it's like, if I'm Warner Brothers executive, I'm going to be like, shut your fucking mouth. Buddy, you're done. Because like, we don't know if that's true. And now you're speaking out of turn. You're not a fucking, you're not, you're not bank rolling these fucking movies, The Rock. You're, you're an actor in this. Right. What are you fucking doing? What are you doing? You're not people Tom Cruise. Just, you're not Tom heads Cruise get too producing big. this. Too big. Heads get too big. He was trying to compare it to, well, the first Captain America um, only made this amount of money. Captain America cost a hell of a lot fucking less than this movie did. Right. And that didn't star The Rock. That's That starred Chris Evans, relatively still unknown uh, when that movie happened. Right, it's, not, exactly. it's apples and oranges, buddy. What are you fucking doing? That was like near. That was at the beginning of the superhero thing. Like that was barely when uh, Disney was getting their teeth into. It. I don't think they Disney owned it yet when that movie was being produced. I think it was. I, it was no, around Disney the time, didn't own that. Uh, own it yet? It was. It was around Avengers when Disney bought it. Right? I think it was, it was like Marvel. after the first Avengers that Disney bought Marvel, or maybe so, even later. Uh, when did they do that? Like it seems like they almost. Had, uh, yeah. Um. Oh, it was two thousand nine. It was two thousand. Okay. Yeah. It was after the first few movies. Maybe. The first couple movies. Okay. All right, it was around that time. But they, okay, so it's anything going to production in 2009, they probably had nothing to do with like Thor or around, or maybe partially. Probably not Avengers. That. Yeah. Avengers, oh, Avengers 2012. They probably did Was by it? Then. Yeah. Okay. Avengers yeah, was a few years in. Okay. Uh, but okay. So here's the point this is an entirely different time. That movie cost a lot more money. Um, and it was pumped up as being like the, the, like the future of the DCU. And I, we don't know if we're going to see a sequel to this at all. Black Adam? Yeah, we don't. Oh, know. no. I, I highly doubt that. So you, I, oh, we forgot to mention, Jason Momoa might be done as Aquaman after the next Aquaman movie, which is, you know, basically in post-production. Like, it's, this is, I mean, this is all within a six-year span. This happening. Batman v. Superman, Justice League, and it falls apart. Like when the like fuck was like, Batman vs. Superman? 2016. Are you fucking kidding me? My sense of time is all fucked up. Yeah. It was three. It took three years between that and and then uh, Superman. Superman twenty sixteen. Yeah, you thought it was earlier, right? No, it was. I did. And then Justice League was seventeen. That's only five years ago. This is this, and they still haven't righted the ship in five years. They knew it was a disaster at Justice League, and five years later, they still are spinning with this stuff. Cancellations, pushing back Flash. The Flash movie should constant come out. talk about ten year fucking plans. The Flash movie was supposed to come out originally like two thousand nineteen or twenty, and it's still not out. And that's and that uh, Ezra Miller is a fucking disaster. Oh with yeah. With that, we don't know. We don't know if there's gonna be a new Flash. I mean, I can't picture this. I've gone any going, worse. I mean, you, we used to have the DC fanboys come after us. Remember, like six years ago. Yep. We were being overly critical. We didn't know what we're talking about. Oh uh, look! How, oh, oh, I like Batman v Superman. I, and look and look who was right. We never miss <laughs> disaster. All right, we gotta move on. We Captain do. Intro. We got a few more things. Uh we're just gonna do the unboxing. It'll be a long intro, but that's fine. It's Christmas. Last one of the year. NBA Jam now has the GOAT, Michael Jordan. Shaq and Barkley, too. Oh, well, they were in it, but uh, taken out. Yeah. So this was a ROM hack. And I was looking at this stuff every few years. I want a modern NBA Jam ROM hack, by the way, for modern rosters, which is possible, but it sounds like it's a lot harder to do the arcade ROM hack versus Super Nintendo. They right, it is. Yeah. So, but this one took uh, the TE Rev 2.1. It added Jordan into the game, which uh, supposedly was in a couple of versions that were sent out to a few players in the early 90s that requested it. Like I think I think like uh, Gary Payton was the one that requested Shaq uh, be uh, not, uh, Jordan be in the game. Right. It had Shaq back in, who was in the original NBA Jam, and I think was taken out even before TE. I think there was a ROM iteration where he was gone; his rights were gone. And then Barkley was taken out because of his rights were gone. He had his own video game stuff as well. So they're back into this version, and then it keeps two point one still has the backboard shattering. I didn't know that was ever taken out. Backboard shattering, oh. fatalities, Mortal Kombat characters, playable cheerleaders, and several more hidden players that were removed in later revisions. So it, it keeps like the, I guess the the, the largest 
roster together. Game. Yeah, it becomes the largest roster. I know they took out the backboard shattering in, in versions of T. I didn't know that. I did, and I can't remember why. I think it was because the NBA was... The violence, like they yeah. took, how they took out fighting in the NHL games for a couple of years. Right, yeah. I think it was just, yeah, it was not something that the NBA wanted to be associated with. There's a whole story about that, the NHL, fight, how like they took out the fighting, the one you're like, right. weeks before it was supposed to come out, they had like rushed to get the code out, and it's just like, no, we don't want fighting, it's out. And they're like, what? And like Anyway, so it's great. The Jordan uh, voice sounds like Tim Kisrow. It sounds like him. So either that was hidden in the ROM or... Probably it, hidden in the ROM, but Kisrow does all sorts of shit still based on the like his popularity from Jam. So I don't think they got him to do this, though. I don't think they did. I sure. Think. But it's it's like, Jordan, it, it's... It sounds close. It could certainly be hidden in the, in a in a file somewhere. Unless they cannibalize two other sounds and cut it together. Sure. Jor and Dan, I guess you can do that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's other, there's no other Jordan on the roster back there. I'm trying to think. There's no DeAndre Jordan. That's a modern player. So it's cool. There's a trailer out. You can you can you can uh, you just gotta patch the ROM and you can play it. And I actually looked at a video of someone that you can you know get it burnt onto your board, and so someone has a, a Jordan. NBG. That's the dream. It's awesome. And the, and, t- and they just named the uh, the MVP trophy after Jordan that came out today. Oh, did they? It's going to be the Michael Jordan tr- uh, MVP trophy going forward. Interesting. I did not know that. Uh, Hakeem Olajuwon, Defensive Player of the Year. Jim Havlicek, uh, Sixth Man of the Year. Uh, George Mikan, uh, Most Improved Player. So now that they all have names. They look terrible, though. The, besides the MVP, they redesigned. They all look terrible, the names. Sorry, a little NBA, M- NBA talk. Um... More, more game preservation news. We're, we'll go over this one very quickly. A, a big gaming Alexandria article. There was a big Sega, like, um, game on rails picture, picture like Star Tours, but you can, you know, you can play the damn thing and like shoot at stuff, like a laser disc. It was a laser disc game. Yeah. Called Michael Jackson and Scramble Training. So they had this at those Sega arcade centers that popped up and they got rid of pretty quickly because they were failures. And I, I think few of these survived because they're giant arcade units were like, they're rides. They're like 10-minute rides. Uh, eight people go into seats, and you fire at stuff. But the point is this. The ROM has never been dumped for this, but the video portion, including the intro with Michael Jackson, has been found. was found at a, a car boot sale, which is close to a you know a flea market sort of thing equivalent here. People yell at me for saying that, but it's the closest thing. And people found the tape, and we got it digitized, so we have that, which is great. Yeah, it's super cool. Because that- none of it was online at all. So, so, I don't know if any comments to that. So it was one of those things where I just always find Michael Jackson's love of Sega to be the only good thing about us yeah. in personal life. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so he had a great relationship with Sega. Then obviously he had the child uh, abuse allegations that happened. Uh. So a few of these units are big boys are still verified to exist. Sega probably has someone somewhere where they don't care about it. Right. In pieces. But there's one in the Ukraine that you can buy off AliExpress. I looked up for twenty five hundred dollars plus. Somehow you get that shit shipped overseas. Good luck. That's gonna cost you ten thousand dollars probably to get that thing shipped. Um, and there's one supposedly in Australia and another one. So the ROM has not been dumped. So if you find one in an arcade, ask to get the board out to get the ROM chips dumped. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> but it would just be like shooting. It would be like those laser disc it's, games. It's like sh- all the laser disc games. Or you get yeah. like really bad graphics and stuff moving around, and you have a target, and you shoot, and you aim at yeah. it, and you get a score. You don't affect the game. You know what I mean? Right. You, don't, you don't affect it. And then um, it's time to unbox some gifts. It is. Let me give you yours first, and then we'll go into the... Uh... Do you want me to tell you what I got you? Or you want to be surprised? You can just surprise me later. It's okay. Fine. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like be- this. I ordered a week and a half ago, so it hasn't arrived. It's amusing. Oh, oh. An Elisa Simpson's bag? I like the bag. Here's the bag we had. It was big enough, and I was like, that's perfect. This this f- seems heavy. Oh, no! I did. You did. <laughs> I did. Was this after a conversation last week? Huh? Was this after we had our conversation about I this last week? I had already gotten you on. <laughs> it's not Nerf, but it's it's a big boy. It's a Tech <laughs> Mon- Pro Edition Monster Jam. I cannot tell you. This is heavy. Yeah, I cannot this, tell you how much my life has improved since adopting the mini hoop lifestyle. Oh, Ian, you shouldn't have. You could have got me a little Nerf guy. That would be fine. But it's, you like this? It's metal. It's a spring-loaded uh, rim, polycarbonate backboard. So it's, and it's like a real backboard, and it's easy to put together. Let's see, where can I? Now I got to find a, a good place. That I can't do it that corner. I guess I could, but I need three sixty. Three sixty. Yeah, I'll find a. 
I'll You'll like, find a spot. I can for do it. it by the, the, the one off the aisle in the back. Right and you here. don't you don't screw it into the door frame. It's just got the hook, so you can yeah, pick hooks, it up like and the, move it like around. Like the Nerf ones yeah. had. Yeah. It goes over the top though. Like that. Yep. Oh, thanks, Ian. That's very thoughtful. It has a little mini pump. <laughs> it's a little ball. pump. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love this thing. <laughs> so you got one for yourself? I got one. I bought I saw them and was so enamored with them that I uh I I I, I spent a lot of money on basketball hoops. I bought four of them. You bought four of these? Bought one for me. I bought one for the kid, uh, for for uh, for toy for the toy drive. Okay. I bought one for you, and I bought one for John. Well, I hope you got a bulk discount. <laughs> I did not, but, but they were totally worth it, dude. Okay. I fucking love them. Who makes these? Again? Tech? Tech. Never well, heard of the company, but well, let's let's get a sponsorship going on. That'd be yeah, <laughs> heavy duty. So it's like real the real metal material. It's metal. Yeah, it's real metal. <laughs> It's not Man, like a plastic if, rim. If you could have got me a $10 Nerf hoop, I would have been ecstatic, but thank you. You're welcome. That's, that's very thoughtful. They're fun. And now we got gifts from, uh, we, well, we got something from Magic Spoon. Th this Inga. was one of the coolest fucking promo things I've ever gotten, and we're not even technically advertising Magic Spoon. Well, right I now. still am on the, for the flea market. Uh, okay. But, so, uh, check this out. They sent... The custom like bowl and spoon. So the spoon is awesome. It's multicolor. It's got that like oil slick. Uh, they call it like oil slick coating. And uh -huh. then that's a uh, silicone bowl. Oh, silicone. I didn't know. Oh, silicone. It's a silicone cereal bowl. You can microwave it. You can. Uh, I, I think it's even like oven safe. They say most bowls are round. Not every breakfast is well rounded. That's right. Okay, was, uh, you guys are faking how much you like magic. No, I love magic spoon. That's good. Eat my ass out there. There's a couple right. flavors I wasn't hugely into, but I'm excited to try this sugar cookie one. Yeah, sugar cookie. They always they always have new. They have like eight different flavors now. They're constantly rotating. Them. Yeah, it's good. I'm fucking starving. I'm fasting. And then Yoshi, our pal Yoshi, got me something. Uh, I almost bought myself this last year. It's a keepsake, Ian. A keepsake. It's an ornament. It's the NES controller. Okay. Oh, they, they put out um, NES stuff the past four or five years. Yeah, I see. I have the NES console from a few years ago that was hard to find at first. Ian, that makes sound. It plays yeah. Super Mario Brothers. I don't think that one makes it sound, but it's cute. I have a little mini Link one as well. I was so checking. I think to see someone gifted us. Sound. I think someone's gifted me the little mini Link uh, a year or two ago. Yeah, that's cute. I like that. And then Yoshi, because uh, he's crazy, got me something that's very specific, but I have no use for it. But I love Yoshi. This is a chin rest for an M16 rifle or AR15. Oh, okay. But this is. The specific one that Gogo 13 has on his rifle. Ah, that's interesting. And this supposedly is very hard to find. Like, that's old and they don't make it anymore. So, like, he had a search for that. That's really fucking cool. You put your chin against it when you, when you lean. Oh, your chin again. Yeah. Okay. It's a chin rest. That's so, fucking so, cool. So, so, so that's, I guess, like this. I guess like this. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, like a shoulder chin sort of deal. So, like... Supposedly, he said, like, he had a, a look far and wide for this. This is, like, from, like, the fucking 70s or, or, or like, early. Like, this is... That is a thoughtful and It's cool very thoughtful. Present. I don't know what I want to do with it or display it. What's funny about Shadow this... Shadow box it next to something else, Gold Glow 13. What's funny about this is that um, he told me about this earlier in the year that he bought it for me. Mm -hmm. And I thought of it a few days ago, randomly. So I said, holy shit, I don't know where that is. He never mailed it to me. He mailed it to me probably when I, about when I thought about it. I'm a little bit psychic. I got psychic powers. All right, and, and then Toy, that one YouTuber who's always in the chat, great, faithful patron, also helped produce the animated Tales from the Game Store. Great guy. Yeah. Got us a bunch of stuff with a letter. This is a long intro, but I don't care, whatever. Um, Dear Pat and Ian, thank you for entertaining us all these years. I appreciate you sharing my content and helping me let... Help me help on the podcast when possible. As you know, I always watch the CU podcast. I wanted to give back to you and Ian both this holiday season. I hope you enjoy what hundreds and hundreds of hours of obsessive near life derailing repeat viewing has told me about what gifts you may like. Okay, that's kind of scary. Uh, list of gifts. Two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle anti-drug t-shirts. Oh, all right. Interesting. Um, Where did these come from? <laughs> these are interesting. I don't know. Uh, we have to uh, share... Which one is for which? We get. We, you're free to decide who gets what. I get. I guess on the sizing. Are they large? They're both large. Okay. Well, we'll have to decide who wants what on these. These are great. So these look like new produced of the old stuff. Because these are new shirts sealed, but they, those like old designs on this. Yeah, toy snob. I mean, both sense. are really cool. This has got Mikey. Uh, in I the, like Raph. The original red. I do like Raph. We'll decide. Is that later. Raph? That's Leo. You like Leo? I do like Leo. Leo's my favorite. 
Okay. That's not Raph. That's Mikey with the original red. Oh, original red? It looks like. Or a dark orange. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll decide later. We'll unwrap sure. them. But, but that's good. Next, two masks. Pat, you're obligated to tell us Mushroom Kingdom. Here we come. <laughs> Wearing this lovely. Oh, my God. This lovely bootleg Mario mask. Oh my oh god. Oh my fucking god. Terrifying. For some reason, it reminds me of the Link mask behind Ian there. Oh no, Ian, don't. Look at that. That is that is like made to be bootleg. Oh my god. It's, <laughs> you're just determined. And I'll put on the uh, cr equally creepy, creepy is the Sonic mask. For some reason, it reminds me, let's put the Sonic. Oh, I can't even fit in this. That reminds me of movie Sonic. I think it's supposed to remind you oh, of movie Sonic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choke trying to put this on. I can't, it doesn't fit. This is turning fetishistic. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that is horrifying. All right, take him this mask off. Yeah, this is going to be tough for me to put on. It smells like Halloween. Okay, so. You want you want this you want the Sonic? I will take the Sonic mask. <laughs> this is horrific. This it's is paper terrifying. thin. All right, what's next? Okay, this is this is this is great. Thank you so much. I've been whining about this all the time. This is the most thoughtful gift. Thank you so much, Toy. Uh, and there's one for each of us. Uh, okay, what do we got here? Which one is this? <clears throat> Mr. Gimmick and a Kirby plush. Oh, sick. sick. They were sewn by a friend of mine. Oh, my God. Look at this. Oh, that, my God. That's incredible. Extra, a little extra napkins tag. Oh, my God. With record. This is amazing. These are sewn by a friend of Toy. mine who came to America from the Ukraine. She has an Etsy you may want to plug. Etsy.com slash shop slash plush gifts toys. Uh, plural. Plush gifts toys toys i she, i love him she calls herself a human 3d printer just tell her what you want and she can make it as you can see and oh my fucking god this is like one of the coolest fucking things holy shit oh my god wow this is the most thoughtful thing that's gimmick it's a gimmick plush it's the dream so what's on what, what's he sitting on a little pillow he's sitting on a little player a little cd Kirby player with a cute little, little uh, turntable with uh headphones little, and little records let me see the records let me see the records oh see you podcast and extra napkins oh, thank you so much that's amazing gimmick is staying out front yeah this is getting a prime spot in the living room gimmick is staying out front for the rest of the podcast i feel like yeah that's incredible thank you so much uh, Ian mentioned he likes coffee table books, so enjoy. I do the history of of the computer, people, inventions, and technology Ooh. that changed the world. Well, thank you by a lovely self publisher, Etsy author Rachel Ig Ignaftoski. I can't pronounce it either. That's what it says here. Oh, this is awesome! I felt like this is so pretty. Look at the fucking art in here. I could have read that. Um, this is funny. I felt like Pat has enough books in his life. And probably start probably. Sh shaking if someone opens a book near him. So I spare him in this one. <laughs> Next, framed comics. Framed comics. What the fuck? I'm, I'm, getting, I'm losing track of what's here. Framed comics. The, include our two comic books from Marvel's 1983 series Blip. I figured Pat would like Sp Spider Man as his favorite, and he would appreciate the trippy, melting console art on the other. Let's see if I can get this open without a box cutter. Oh, shit. Oh, these are great. Oh, that's awesome. Watch out. That's a little loose in the bottom there. What the fuck? Oh, that's cool. Are, I never heard of this. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, so, I've never heard of it either, but that's amazing. Comics? This is great. And I do like that trippy Sp melting. Spider-Man plays Spider-Man in the 2600. How to win at Donkey Kong. So it's like computer and video game technology. Yeah, that's books. awesome. I want to. I want to read this. I want to take it out and read this. Oh, we're not done. There's more. There's somehow more. Um, records. Where are the records. Records. Like, records. Oh my god! Yes, there's records in here. I didn't notice that. The records. Uh, Ian. Meant, uh, uh, Ian now has a re-release of one of my favorite John Carpenter Italo Italo dance remix. Ooh, ooh, what do we got here? Albums for the, the Splash Band. And for Pat, straight from Japan, I'm going to guess it's something Queen. Is 
1986's Mario Syndrome LP by Bonus 21. Oh. Great for display, not necessarily for listening. Are you familiar with Bonus 21? Nope, I am not. Okay, well, let's see if I can get this out of here without breaking it up. Records is tough. Oh. Oh, this is tough. Careful. You did a great job wrapping it. There we go. Oh, that's a really cool looking cover. Oh, this is mine. This is this is yeah. uh this seems like a bootleg because Mario's on it. The back. There you go. There's yours. You can get that. The back's got princess. Thank you so much. And then there's more. Uh a painting. Included as a one-of-a-kind piece of art from me in Kenya. Kenya, my artist. Oh, this is awesome. Kenya, Kenya did the artwork on on the uh, Tales from the Games from Animated. It's the it's 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 the music of John Carpenter, but done by a different band. That's awesome. Interesting. So the last thing is a piece of art from Kenya, who who did that. Here's the hanging horror, which is funny. I know Amiko is a popular subject for the podcast and the feud is so hot, <laughs> but what if a certain minor league? Fantasy camp baseball star could be a major man and make peace. What if indeed? What the fuck is this? Oh, no. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> oh, no. It's it's artwork of Ian, me, <laughs> Tommy Tallarico, and is that supposed to be Chris Pratt? And Mamma Mia, at least it's not the the Depo- Depolium. And Ian says, well, Pat, you wrecked Tommy's cornhole with that one. I say, thanks for coming around, Tommy. Playing the only known working Amigo certainly is a limited experience. <laughs> Trademark. And then Tommy says with his Amigo sweater, no, thank you guys for helping me realize it's not about making the Amigo. It's about the Amigos you make along the way. Guess you could say all that drama was completely unnecessary. Miyamoto-san, hurry up with those Mario margaritas. Whew, that's wonderful. And there's a little gold plate with it with a description that says... An amicable Amico Xmas 2022. Amazing. This is fucking amazing. That is amazing. I will take a picture of this and put it here so you can see better the, the picture. Yeah. This is fucking incredible. That's so good. Thank you, Kenya. Very yes. popular. Uh, very, Thank very, you. Very nice artist. Very. This is, yeah, we're about to have visitation rights for this. That's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like, awesome. I, I'm keeping it. I want to keep this. That's fine. It says both. And then, uh, I, oh, here you go. Here's the hang on. Thank you so much. I got a uh, book. Toy. You get a painting. That's, I mean, like. It's really that's impressive. That's original art. Yeah, I love it. I think that's supposed to be Chris Pratt on the end. But I'm not positive with, with the mustache. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's supposed to be Chris Pratt. It, does, it doesn't say anything. I actually don't know. <laughs> but everyone else is uh, very I, obvious. I'm sure in the comments right now, and a I live will it. say it. Yes. That's so cool. That's so, that's great. Wow. Best, well, best thank trip. you. Yeah, I, I mean, like, that's, like, ridiculous. Sir, that's incredible. Thank you, Toy. Checks in the mail. I feel like I, feel like I should pay for at least for the plush. The plush is, is amazing. Thank you.